everyone, it's Karen with the Yes Please Paper Press, and this video is part of the Let's Get Organized YouTube Pop, where each month we share our organization and storage solutions for our craft rooms. So for the month of March, we're sharing our favorites. So be sure and go check out everyone that is participating in this YouTube Pop, and I'll have links to their videos in the description below. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to see what everyone shares in their videos as their favorites in their craft room. Okay, so I'm going to get started by sharing five of my favorite products that I use for storage. And then I'm going to share some organization tips that will help, hopefully help you in your craft room and getting more organized. Okay, so I'm going to start off by sharing some of my favorite storage products. And this first one is from the Dollar Tree. It's the SureFresh Reusable Mini Containers and Lids. And you get 10 in a pack for a dollar. Now the price may have gone up a bit. I have not been to the Dollar Tree in a long time and I know their prices have gone up a little bit, but even if it was a little bit more, I think it would still be a really good value. And I love using these to store small embellishments like paper clips, wood veneer, enamel charms, flare buttons. You can store pretty much anything in here that's small. You can store sequins and beads and just all kinds of stuff. So this is a really awesome storage solution for small embellishments. And then the other one that I have for small indulgements is this one here from Harbor Freight. And this is Storehouse 25-piece storage box system. And this is really awesome. It comes with this uh, box that has a lid you can open and close. And then it contains 25 of these little storage boxes. They're super easy to open and you can fit lots of stuff in there. And I wanted to share these two together and just to show you all a little bit of the difference in the size because uh, this one here, you can fit, the Dollar Tree one, you can fit a lot bigger um, embellishments. And then the one from the uh, Harbor Freight uh, really is a lot smaller. So you can't fit as much in there, but I'll just share with you this. So you can see here that this one is pretty much full, but if I was to put it in here, it would probably be only half. So that's the difference in the size. I also like that the Harbor Freight one is clear on all the sides. The Dollar Tree one has this white lid and that's still okay. You can still see through right through it and you can see exactly what's in there. And so um, I think that this one is really awesome for storing small items or things where you don't have a lot of this of something to store. And then these are better if you have larger items like wood veneer and pieces or something like paper clips because that would probably not fit in the Harbor Freight one. So let me just go ahead and share with you a couple of other examples. Here are some wood veneer pieces and uh, I have a whole bin here of paper clips. So you can hear, see that you can store quite a bit of paper clips in each one of these Dollar Tree containers. So that's really awesome and a super easy way to store small embellishments. And then uh, one of the things I like to do I like to contain uh, my bins in other bins because it really makes it portable. So I have these two containers stored in my Alex drawer units where I have all of my small embellishments. And so if I want to uh, work with some uh, paper clips, I can just pull this whole thing out of the drawer and, uh, and be able to carry it to my workspace. If you can actually put these directly into the drawer, but then you have to dig through the drawer uh, to find things. So sometimes it's a really good idea to have a container of smaller containers to keep everything contained. And so I really like doing that. Now this container right here comes from the Dollar Tree as well. And it's a um, essentials organizer, I think is what it's called. And I'll try to put links in the description below to any of the organization products that I'm sharing in this video. So y'all know where you can go to find them. But uh, these uh, storage containers right here, and then also this plastic kind of acrylic looking bin came from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so I'm going to also share with you guys, um, this is the bin that I have here with a whole bunch of embellishments using the Harbor Freight. Uh, this is the storehouse 25 piece uh, storage solution. And you can see I have that contained inside of the box. Now you can use uh, the box by itself and then have this stored somewhere else or you can uh, use the box to store all of the little containers. Uh, and now the next thing I want to share with you is something that I found recently that I was super excited about. And I don't think I've shared this in the video yet, but uh, all of the small embellishment organization I have 
Uh, actually, a couple of videos already on my YouTube channel where I sh shared how I store and organize my small embellishments. And I'll put links to those videos in the description below as well. And you can get uh, more details on how I store all of my small embellishments. And uh, I'm just going to set this over here to the side and bring over this right here. Now, this is a washi storage solution from Michaels. And I'll put the name of this product up here on the screen. I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. Uh, but I, I mainly had it for storing washi tape. And if you can see here, it has, it really is a nice way to store your washi tape. And I love storing the washi tape in here. It's really easy to pull the drawer out and be able to see exactly what you have in there. And it fits the washi tape really well. So there are three different sections and there's three different drawers in this unit. In this one, I have just flare buttons just stored in there. And um, I just have them all just like loose in the drawer. But you can see that there's dividers in the drawer. And that's why the washi tape doesn't roll around because there's three uh, places to put the washi tape. This is awesome. And let me flip this up here so you can kind of see. It has three drawers. And I had, I had uh, purchased these online. And it, I think the one I, I got was a bundle of six. And the price on that was so much less expensive than buying them just one at a time, like a single um, one of these storage solutions. So I went ahead and got the pack of six and uh, I wasn't using all of it for washi tape. And so I was trying to figure out different ways that I could use these, uh, this particular storage solution to store other things. And when I was uh, going through uh, different ideas that I had, I actually came across the fact that you can store these little mini containers from uh, the Harbor Freight inside of this. It fits perfectly in there. So it's really awesome. You can store these little mini containers from the storehouse. These are the ones from Harbor Freight. And you can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, you can fit nine in there. It's not quite enough space there to put 10. So 27 of these little containers would fit in one of these drawers. And I think that's really awesome that you can fit those little containers inside of here and um, just have another way of organizing and storing things. So what I have here, I have flare in different uh, flare buttons in different categories. I think this is Maggie Holmes. I have some grandparents uh, buttons, some Christmas buttons, just different, uh, different uh, buttons in here that are separated by a category or a type. And then these are just all loose ones that uh, I've kind of collected over the years. I had thought about dividing these up into colors, and so I might go ahead and do that at some point and just spend some time uh, dividing it up into, you know, different colors and possibly putting in some dividers here so that I could have uh, pink, red, yellow, and maybe like nine different sections. I could create some dividers in here and uh, do that. So that's my plan. I'm going to probably have one of these storage containers like this for flare buttons. And then I just, I just actually put this washi tape in here temporarily just to show y'all what this container looks like or this drawer unit looks like with the washi tape in there. Okay, so let me go ahead and move this over here to the side. Okay, so the next storage solution that I wanted to share with y'all is this one here. And I have a lot of different ways to store my scrapbooking collections, but my favorite storage solution for scrapbooking collections is actually the Creative Memories Power Project Folders. I love these project folders, they're amazing. Now, um, the price is a little bit, you might find the price a little bit high, but it's a very high quality product. It's very sturdy, and over the time that I've been using it, it really holds up well. So I really love this, this product. So let me go ahead and show you guys this. Um, so this is one of the Power Product um, Power Project folders. You get four in a pack, and I believe the price point on this is twenty dollars. So they're five dollars a piece, um, but it's reusable. So once you use up this collection, you could use it for another collection. Um, and it's it's gonna I think it's gonna last for a really long time in your craft room because it's made of a really heavy plastic and very durable. I haven't had any problems at all with uh, this product from Creative Memories. And one of the things I love about it is it has storage products, that, storage pockets that are really easy, easily accessible and uh, a lot of storage pockets. So we have this one in the middle right here where you can put your 12 by 12 papers. And then you have two larger pockets on the back that fit six by 12. 
And then over here on this side, we have two smaller pockets at the bottom where you can put your small embellishments. And then here at the top, there is a long, narrow pocket. If you were using the border strips from Creative Memories, it would fit perfectly right in there. And then also, even in this 12 by 12 pocket, you can still fit other embellishments. You see, I have some other embellishments tucked down there in my 12 by 12 pocket. So it fits a lot of product. And I think that this Power Project folder from Creative Memories is one of the most awesome ways to store my collections. And I do have another video that I posted on my YouTube channel a while back. It's the very first hop number one of this Let's Get Organized series where we all shared how we store our scrapbooking collections. And I have shared all of the different ways that I store my scrapbooking collections. I really wish that I could use this for all of my scrapbooking collections, um, but uh, it's really not cost effective to do that. And I really don't need it for each of my collections. I only use them for uh, collections where I have a lot of products. Um, so that's uh, one of my absolute favorites in my craft room. And I am also a Creative Memories advisor. So if you don't have an advisor and you wanna go shopping at Creative Memories and pick up some of these Power Project folders, I'll put a link to where you can shop with me in the description below as well, and also up here on the screen. Okay, so that is my third storage product that I love. Okay, so let me take this away and then I'm gonna share my next favorite product Okay, so this next item is the Iris Slim Project Case. It's for eight and a half by 11 projects, so it does not fit 12 by 12 paper. And uh, this one, you can fit so many things. It's really awesome. So let me show y'all what this looks like. It's a slim case, project case, and it has hinges on the back. There's a two clasps on the side right here, and uh, you can store all kinds of things. So the first thing I'm gonna share with, here, with you here is wood stamps. So wood stamps are stored perfectly in this container. Uh, I don't have very many wood stamps, but I have all of my wood stamps stored in the Slim Project cases. I think I have five different cases. And then what I did was I took a picture with my phone of each one of these project cases, what the contents are, and I can uh, know exactly what's in each one of these. And then I just have them labeled wood stamps one through five. And so it's an awesome way to store your wood stamps they fit in there perfectly. <laughs> so I love using that to store uh, wood stamps. Okay, so the next uh, thing that you can store in this Slim Project case are Nubo Crystal Drops. So here are the Nubo Crystal Drops. And what I did here was I created some divider tabs or dividers that you can actually uh, use so that all of these stay in place. And I just did that using some heavy cardstock. I have a video on my YouTube channel where I shared how I made these inserts for the, um, the Slim Project case. And so you can see this is really awesome because it, it keeps everything together. It doesn't move around. And when I store this on my books, on my closet, I store it upside down like this so that all of the bottles in there are stored where the, where the top is at the bottom so that when you go to use it, you don't have to worry about air bubbles. And so it's an awesome way to store your Nebo drops. The same thing goes for stickles. Here is the uh, stickle glue or uh, glitter glue and I have uh, that as well and I just uh, created the dividers in here and it has a little bit extra room so I have some extra ones down here at the bottom um, which the Nebo drops are taller bottles so you can't you don't really have the extra room but the stickles there's a little bit of extra room there at the bottom Okay, here are some shimmer paints. So this is all watercolor paints from Shimmers. So I have all of these stored in here. And uh, I thought about storing them upside down so I could see the color, but I worried a little bit about it leaking. So I just have it stored uh, this way. And I can see the name of the color on the top. Something that I'd like to do over the next year or so is to go through and make some swatches for all of my watercolor and inks. And I've done a little bit of that, but I haven't completely finished it. But when I do that, I would be able to uh, create a swatch book with all of the different colors and then uh, have an idea of where it's stored because I have it all together in one place. Okay, so the next thing I have here is the Distress Oxide. So you can store ink pads in here as well. And I did create inserts for this as well. Um, the only thing that I don't like about storing the ink pads in here is that uh, they're stacked 
double stock so you can't really see everything that's in here at a glance. Also, they will leak depending on the ink pad if you store it vertically um, on your bookshelf like this. You can uh, end up with uh, the ink pads ink, uh, running, the ink running out and, and uh, just uh, the lids coming off. So it's better if you're storing ink in here uh, to store it flat because otherwise you might have some trouble uh, with your ink pads uh, leaking. Okay, you can also store, this is little mini craft inks. And again, I just created a storage uh, divider insert to put into here. Okay, and uh, this one, you can also multi-stack this as well. You can see I have two here together and uh, it fits a lot of ink cubes. So these are the little mini ink cubes. Okay, up next we have our Distress Minis. And you can see here, I had a problem with my uh, inks uh, leaking and I don't really mind so much that it leaked, it leaked into the case, but it does ruin your ink pad if all of the ink runs out of it or if the lid is loose and air is getting in there it draws it up so you really want to make sure that your lids are staying on and that you keep it flat because otherwise you might have trouble with um, the ink uh, coming out like that okay and then the last thing I'm going to share with you here is I just have some of these little mini uh, containers with beads so that fits in here as well and uh, I think it's really awesome that so many different things in my craft room fit into these slim project cases. <laughs> so really amazing and awesome, the different things that uh, can fit. If you have uh, an item that you put into these slim project cases that I did not share here, and it's different if you wanted to leave a comment on this video and just share what uh, types of products you store in these slim project cases, that would be awesome because I'd love to have more ideas on what I can store uh, in these cases. They're really amazing. You can get these from Michaels and also from Amazon, and I'll put links in the description below where you can find these. Okay, the last thing that I wanna share here are these acrylic drawers. And I have uh, three different types of acrylic drawers here. All of these I picked up on Amazon. So I'll share with you first this set of drawers here. These are really slim drawers that have three drawers in each one of the units, and I have three units stacked on top of each other. And then this one appears a little bit different because it has these two smaller drawers at the top. Um, but I have all of my enamel dots by color stored in these acrylic drawers. I think these are mainly meant for um, cosmetics or jewelry, but I'm using them for my crafting supplies. And then next to that, we have these deflecto bins. There are two drawers in each one of these bins, and they're stackable. And this is where I keep my embellishments my ephemera by color so each drawer has a different color uh, so we have yellow orange red and so on okay and those are from deflecto and then the last set of drawers that i have over here these are from amazon and there's three drawers in each one of these uh, units so i have um, four units here each one has three drawers and this is where i'm storing things that are by type so here I have flowers, up here I have hearts, and then here I have some acrylic pieces. So this is just different things by type. Here I have bows. So if I'm looking for a, a bow or a flower or a butterfly or something like that, a particular type of item, I will look in these acrylic drawers. So I think the acrylic drawers are really fun. You can uh, see through them and see the bright colors. It makes it really cheerful in your craft room. So I really love having uh, these acrylic drawers. It's one of my favorite storage items. Okay, so those were some of my absolutely favorite storage products that I use in my craft room. And I think it's really awesome to have good ways to store your crafty supplies, but even more important is to be organized. So let's talk a little bit about organization and I'm gonna share with you a few tips that I have on how you can get more organized in your craft room. So let's talk a little bit about having things close by. So I think that's one of the things that most people struggle with is trying to fit all of the things that you use close to where you work so that you have everything within reach and you can easily get to it. And I think uh, that's really an awesome thing to be able to do, but most people have way too many crafty supplies to fit everything close to where their workspace is. So if you're 
if you're just getting started and you don't have much, I mean, that's pretty easy to do. But uh, once you start collecting a lot of crafty supplies, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to keep everything close to hand. So um, that's one of the key challenges, I think, with organization is uh, keeping things accessible and close to where you work. And then the second challenge, I think, is finding things and then knowing where to put something back. So I want to share with you some tips that I have uh, developed over the years to help me with trying to keep things close by and also um, be able to find things when I'm looking for them. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is if you have something in a large quantity, but you're only ever going to use a small amount of it, you can do something like this that I did with my twine. And I created this uh, ribbon hang tag using my Cricut. And I have a free file if you want to uh, get this free file. I have it for the all three of the machines, Silhouette, the Brother Scan and Cut, and also the Cricut. And you can uh, cut these out of either cardstock or out of clear acetate plastic. And uh, what I did here was I just uh, cut off a couple of yards of this twine. And then I put the big bulky rolls of twine in a drawer somewhere uh, else in my craft room that's further away. So I have this hanging up on the side of my Rascog cart, and every time I want a piece of twine to add to a project, I can just take this off of my Rascog cart and uh, use it, and then um, I put it, put it right back. So it's really easily accessible, it's close to hand, it's a small amount of product, and then I can keep all of the excess in another location. So um, one of the things that I did here was I labeled each one of these, so you can see here, this one is labeled B2, and I labeled the big spool of twine as B2. So when I run out of this twine, I can go to over to where I have my big rolls of twine stored and refill. So this is a really good way of um, keeping a small sampling of something close by your workstation so that you don't have to, you know, struggle with trying to, to get to this because it would be really more difficult to bring all of those huge rolls of twine over to your workspace and to find the one that you want for your project. This works really well if you're gonna use a small amount. And I usually generally use this for scrapbooking or card making where I wanna put twine on a tag or I wanna put a bow, um, wanna make this into a bow. So it works really well for that. But uh, you can use that technique of a sampling of items uh, with beads, with sequins, with glitter, with anything that you have in your craft room. If you have a, a bulk amount of it and you just want to keep a little bit close at hand, uh, you can um, to use that technique to keep something close by and it will take up a little bit of your space and not a huge amount of space. Uh, so that is the first tip that I wanted to share with you guys. Okay, and I do have a video on my YouTube channel where I shared more about uh, ribbon and twine organization. So if you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description below to where you can find that video on how I store and organize my ribbon and twine. Okay, so the next uh, idea that I have here for you guys is to create a visual reference guide to something in your craft room so that you can just keep these little books close by to where you're working and then you can store the items uh, that are referenced by these books in another location. So for example, I have these two books right here. These are all of my paper pads that I have stored in my closet. So if I'm working on a project and I want to find a paper pad, I can just flip through these books to find the paper pad that I want. And then when I find that paper pad, I just need to flip it over and I can find exactly where this is in my closet and just go pull it out. Now, one of the things that's really awesome about labeling each one of your items like this and creating a reference guide is not only do I know where to go to find that, I also know where to go to put it back. Because I think one of the biggest things about organizing in the craft room is that you might get things organized and then you pull things out to work on a project and then they don't go back in the place where they were supposed to. So over time, you will get more and more disorganized as you go because uh, things don't manage to make their way back to the home. So um, the best thing to do is to have a home in your craft room for each of your items so that uh, you know exactly where to go to get that item and then you know exactly where to go to put it back. So using a visual reference guide will help you with that process of storing something in a place uh, and being easily able to find it. And uh, so yeah, 
it's really been a game changer when I did my paper pad organization and storage and I have videos on my YouTube channel for that as well. <laughs> so pretty much everything that I'm sharing right now in this video probably is not new. It's probably something I've already shared in the past because I've been doing organization videos for, I don't know, three or four years now on YouTube. Um, so if you go and check out my other organization videos, you'll probably see it there. Okay, and then uh, a lot of times people have um, tools that they use and having those close at hand is really awesome unless you have... Um, you know, a large amount of them. And I, I love punches. So I have a ton of punches and it's really hard to keep track of those. So I decided to do a, a reference guide for my punches. And I have punched out every punch that I have in my craft room and created these little books. I have three different books here and I have these punches stored in different places in my craft room. And that's one of the awesome things about using a reference guide is that uh, it, it uh, eliminates the need to store everything together that's like uh, together in one place. So if uh, normally you would store all your punches in one place, you would store all of your dies in one place and keep those items together. Um, but doing these reference guides allows you to store these in different places because you can put on the reference guide, the location of where you have that item stored in your craft room. So because I have a large number of punches, I have them stored in different places in my craft room. And so having this reference guide helps me to know where that punch is uh, so that when I'm working on a project and I, I want to use a punch, I know exactly where to go in my craft room. And then when I'm ready to put away my uh, tools that I use, I know exactly where that punch should go back. So I think uh, that's one of the key things in keeping yourself organized is to have a home for each item in your craft room and uh, to know where that home is so that you can put your things back. Because um, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges is that you will spend a lot of time organizing only to find a few months or years down the road that you become very disorganized. And I learned that the hard way. So <laughs> I know that that's how, how it works for me. If I don't have a home for something, I end up losing it. And I end up spending more time looking for things than I do working on my projects. So my goal in my craft room is to spend time organizing and, and creating organization systems and things like the reference guides so that I can spend more time crafting and not have to worry about looking for things and trying to find things when I need them. <laughs> So another way to get things close to you without actually storing them close to you is to store them in uh, a cart that has wheels. And uh, I have a couple of different carts in my craft room. I have a cart with it where I have all of my tools stored uh, that I have near my workspace. And then I have one where I store my dies. I have another one where I store embellishments. So uh, I have these different carts in my craft room and when I'm working on projects, I can just wheel that cart right over to my workstation and have that available uh, when I'm doing my um, project. So I think having carts on wheels is a really awesome way to have things close by without them really being close by because you can put the cart in a closet, you can put that cart in another, in another room, um, you can that cart can float around your craft room if it's on wheels and it's easily moved around. It's really awesome to have the carts. I know a lot of people struggle with the craft carts and there is a way to use those that makes them a little bit more efficient and that is to use containers inside the craft cart. Now I have a video where I shared my tool Razcog cart where I store all my tools. If you'd like to see that, I'll put a link to that video in the description below as well. <laughs> Okay, so the last thing that I want to share with you guys is using containers to store everything. Because if you put things into a container, it makes it easier to bring that to your workspace. So if you can't store something close by, you can store it in a closet or a drawer. If it's in a container like this and you can just grab it and go, it makes it a lot easier to um, bring that over to where you're working. So, so I use containers within containers like I did here. I use containers inside all of my drawers and uh, I use containers in the closet. And so when you have a bunch of items that go together that you want to keep contained together, you can just uh, use that uh, idea of putting it into a container, even if it's in a drawer, I like to put it into a container first and then put the container into the drawer. It makes it easier to be able to just grab this whole container, take it to my workspace to work. 
and it just makes it a little bit more portable. It makes it to where you can store things away in closets and drawers and other places, but still have them easily accessible when you want to work on a project. Okay, well, that's all the organization and storage and tips that I have to share with you guys today. I hope you've gotten some good ideas on how you can store items in your craft room and how to keep yourself organized. And be sure and go check out everyone else's videos that is participating in this YouTube hop, and hopefully you'll get even more ideas from their videos. Okay, that's all I have, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe. I'd love to have you join my channel. And y'all take care. Hope y'all have an awesome weekend, and I hope to see you next time. Bye now.